Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Salam and a very good afternoon everyone. Welcome back to our virtual Icon Effect 2020 and we are on MB live streaming. Thank you for being with us this afternoon and my name is Dayang Maheran Ahmad, the moderator for this session. Ladies and gentlemen, our dear viewers, as promised for our third keynote speech, we are very honoured to have Professor Mustaf al Atabi from, from Harriet Watt University, Malaysia. And we are communicating with Professor Mustaf via Google Meet. Assalamualaikum, Prof. Waalaikumsalam. How are you? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for being with us also this afternoon. Okay, for those uh, who just joined us on FB Live, a very warm welcome to all of you and thank you for joining us. And we would like to invite everyone to post your comment or question, which will be entertained later in our Q&A session. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before we proceed with the keynote speech, allow me to share with you a brief introduction of Professor Mustaq al -Atabi. Professor Mustaq al -Atabi is currently the Provost and CEO of Harriet Watt University, Malaysia, where he works with senior academics across Harriet Watt University, five global campuses, to help develop and lead innovative transnational teaching. A passionate educator, innovator, and an agent of change. Uh, professor also always challenges the status quo to unlock value. He pioneered the use of CDIO educational framework in Malaysia and offered one of the first massive open online courses, MOOCs, in Asia in 2013. He consults for national, multinational corporations, including banks as well as manufacturing and energy companies in the areas of leadership, innovation, human development, perform, for human development performance and technology. Professor is the author of Shoot the Boss, Think Like an Engineer and Driving Performance, and the founding editor-in-chief of the Journal of Engineering Science and Technology. His research interests include thermal fluids, renewable energy, biochemical engineering, engineering education, and academic leadership. He has numerous research publications, awards, and honors. He is also a much sought after speaker at international conferences and has appeared on TEDx talks. His presentations include storytelling and engineering, a lasting change emotional and social intelligence, engineering, and the language of success and global entrepreneur mindset. Wow. So ladies and gentlemen, with the huge contributions and successes in the introduction, please welcome Professor Mustaq al Tabi with his keynote speech entitled, Positive Education, Bridging the Human Gap. Over Thank to you. Thank you very Prof. much. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate your uh, very kind uh, introduction and I hope that I'll live to uh, all these expectations that you uh, uh, have laid out. So right. I'll be sharing my slides here. Okay. Um, this is, I hope you can see it now. Yeah, very clear. Good. Thank you very much and very good afternoon uh, to those in Malaysia. Very good morning or good evening if you are dialing uh, up from another part of the of the world. Uh, this is a picture of uh, our campus. Uh, this is a place, a very beautiful place. Yeah. Uh, we, we took it for granted really for, for very long and now right. we, we, we need to work from home. We are, uh, we are missing, missing this. So I hope mm. that I could bring all of that uh, together in the talk today. Right. And I sometimes start my talks with, with a picture and a question and mm -hmm. today is no different. This picture that you see here mm -hmm. has been taken more than a hundred years ago for a cigar factory. These gentlemen are yeah. all cigars. Okay. And uh, there is a, a, a gentleman who is sitting there, very relaxed, you know, and reading a newspaper. Okay. And when I do this in a in a in a in a face to face kind of session, okay. I I usually ask people, mm -hmm. what do you think the job of this gentleman is? And, uh, and, and I bet many of you would, would think that he is a supervisor or the owner or, 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 or something or like a manager or a quality controller or something like that. Right. And, and this is the wrong answer because this guy's job is right. to, um, 
is actually to read the newspaper. Mm. And he reads it for everybody to entertain them. Okay. And, and, and his job is called, it has a name, it's called a lector. And the reason that many of us have not heard of this job, because this job has disappeared entirely before any of us maybe even was born. So, so why I start with this? Because, you know, if you're like me and you read all these reports that's you know, coming from all the consultants and, and think tanks, there seems to be an agreement that because of the technological advancement that we are having, many jobs will be lost. All right. The only thing that people are discussing is, would it be a billion job, would it be half a billion job, would it be more, would it be less? And, and, and there is that agreement that jobs will be, will be lost. Now, you may think that even if jobs are lost, technology will give us new jobs, better jobs. This has happened before during the, the first industrial revolution. Many people lost their jobs, lost their manual jobs. Yeah. But in the long run, the economy grew and we had better jobs, better paying jobs, more enjoyable jobs, easier jobs, and we were all better off as a, as a result. So now there are two schools of thought. One is saying that, yes, jobs will be lost. Don't worry, this is progress. And there will be some other jobs created. And there is another school of thought that says, a job will be lost, but this time is different. And we won't be able to create, we won't necessarily be able to have better paying, better jobs generally after that. Mm -hmm. One of my hopes today is to provide you with a frame of mind to think about this question, which is, will there be better jobs or not? And form your own opinion about it. I won't share my opinion. I want, it, I want you to form your opinion. Mm -hmm. Now, to me, I believe that we bring to any endeavor, any job, anything that we do, three types of capabilities. I call them labors. So we bring our physical labor, physical capability, we can move things from one place to other. We can, you know, use our muscle power to do certain things. Mm -hmm. And we have our cognitive labor, our thinking capability, and we have our emotional labor. These things happen at different levels. So uh, physical labor could be as simple as manual work. You give me a room and ask me to sweep the floor. This is, I, I use mainly physical labor. Yes, I also use my thinking capabilities and so on, but mm -hmm. it's mainly uh, my physical labor. If I'm disabled, I won't be able to do that. There's also the skilled work uh, for people if they have a certain skill, like tailors or, or, or carpenter or something like that. And there's also precision work. You know, think of the the skills, the physical skills that a heart surgeon needs or a piano tuner needs. The cognitive labor also happens at different levels. So, its its most basic level is memory, our ability to memorize and remember things, it moves to analysis, critical thinking, and ultimately to creativity. Our emotional labor is about our awareness, is about empathy, our ability to build relationship, our, our ability to act and, and behave ethically. Now, these, whatever we do, we need all of them. You know, even if you, if you are doing the simplest of the jobs, you will need all of them. Exactly. But, these are the, 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 the three things that, uh, that, that, that we need. Now, interestingly, since the, the dawn of civilization, we have been on a journey to replace ourselves. We, we, we call it progress. We usually don't like to do like, the difficult part of the, of, of the work. So we have um, invented the wheel. We um, domesticated animals. We wanted always to get something else, someone else to do the job on our behalf. So what you see in the diagram here, the shaded area, is the area where the things that we are doing are being replaced by by machine or animal, animal power and, and, and something like that. So you see that physical labor was the first candidate for replacement. And this carried on until the middle of 1800s, where we had the industrial 
uh, revolution where when we unlock the power of steel, you could see the importance of physical labor, the human physical labor, really diminished because most of the things that we do, you know, became um, doable by machines. So now, when we when we think about that, you will you look at our machines. They are always faster than us. They are always stronger than us. They are always actually more precise than us. So it's very difficult for any one of us to to get a job just by virtue of being strong. Now, if you are an athlete, that's a different story. So there will always be uh, some room for special people who will be able to get their jobs maybe because of their physical capabilities. But generally, the physical, manual labor will not be the way the human will bring value because machines can do better than that. Now, interestingly, at around that time, you know, the 1800s, we started to create some machines, usually mechanical machines, that are able to perform some, some cognitive activities. So they can add, subtract, do simple things. And these were you know, the, the, uh, the harbingers of, of today's computers, really. And, but these machines were very costly, very heavy, very slow. And we always thought that uh, the, human, the human brain will always be superior to machine in the cognitive uh, capabilities until in 1997, which was a watershed moment when Deep Blue, uh, a computer, was able to beat Gary Kasparov in, 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 in the game of chess, which is a game that we, until then, we thought has something human about it. Now, since then, we were again on a journey of replacing ourselves uh, almost in a non-stop way uh, with, with machines, and now, we know that our, our mobile phones are, have better memories than us, bigger memories, uh, very fast recall. There are machines now that are able to do very quick analysis, and they are better than, than us in, 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 in these cognitive capabilities. As a matter of fact, uh, today, no human doctor can beat uh, computers in things like diagnosis or reading x-rays. They are much better than any human Doctor. So we seem to be uh, losing it in the cognitive domain, and this seems to be continent. Yes. So look at that. At, at your left, the kind of skills that we bring, and to the right is the kind of skills that you know machines are unable to to do yet. And if you look at them, you see the, the ethics, the relationship, the empathy, the awareness, the creativity, to a certain extent, critical thinking. There will always be room for precision work if you are like the, the best piano player or the best athlete. Yeah, you, you will, the, these people will, will always be able to uh, earn a living and add value through their physical traits and physical capabilities. Now, interestingly, these things that are left to the right, to the, I mean, to the right of the diagram, are the things that Industry have been telling us for, for decades that they want students who have these capabilities. And these are the things that education generally was struggling to, to, uh, to actually uh, uh, inculcate into our, into our students. So this is, this, is, um, uh, this, is, this is the ultimate human gap. We are, as humans, we are building, we are building technology that is complicated, that's so complicated that we have lost the ability to keep with it because of its speed and of its complexity and its volume and huge size. Really think of big data and how it can be used to do fascinating things. And, and our ability to deal with this is reducing. So there is an opening gap between the level of complexity that we have created and our ability to, to deal with that. This has a lot of implications. But before that, depend, I think regardless which, which uh, uh, report you read, employers, as I said, have always asked for what, what we call uh, soft skills. Uh, strong ethics, yeah. communication, teamwork. And these are things that 
we, we have been as, as educators actually around the world uh, really not doing very great in, 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 in calculating all of that. Now, interestingly, this was a, a, a quote I, I picked a couple of years ago by N, uh, Andy Haldane, who's the chief economist of the Bank of England. And he said that students may be better off developing emotional intelligence. You think of that emotional labor that I spoke about than cognitive skills to prepare for a future to work in which they will be competing against robots. Mm -hmm. So you think about it, these, are these machines that are much stronger than us physically, and I dare say much more smarter and if, if we measure smart by how you analyze, how you select, and, and I think when I used to drive, I, uh, I use ways to, to show me the way. I mean, it's smarter than me when it comes to, 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 to these kind of tasks. So we should not be focusing on uh, developing graduates who are there to compete with robots with, with their capabilities increase every day with every software update. So he says that emotional intelligence is what we need to to focus on, and I totally agree with him. As a matter of fact, I think the only thing that will bridge this gap, the human gap, between how complex our technology is and how slow our carbon-based you know, thinking faculties are, is our wisdom and our emotional capabilities and our capability to connect with, with each other. There is, there is another element that is extremely important which is the, the, the fact that our youth are struggling with a sense of purpose. So this is from the work of Professor William Damon from Stanford University, where he said in, a, in his book that the majority of young people are struggling to make the leap into adulthood, adulthood. And he said that educators, parents, and communities should make more concerted effort to help brotherless youths find a clear direction and overarching sense of purpose. Now, why this is important? So he is not saying let these kids be on their own. Eventually, they'll find it, they'll find their way. He's saying we need to do something with them, and I think this is extremely important in my opinion. Yeah. So this is the part that I I told you about, which is the human gap. And interestingly, I found a reference to this in, uh, human gap. In, in, a, in a report that was published in 1979. This is a very long time ago. Yes. And it defines the human gap as this distance between the growing complexity and our capability to cope with it. So, so it's, it's an important thing, and I believe it's very important for educators like us to, to really look into this and, and, and re-examine the value that we are adding and whether it is still fit for purpose, particularly at the time of COVID. You see, I believe that at, every, at the exchange of every value, there needs to be a human being. So if you say this calculator is worth five ringgit or 50 ringgit or 5,000 ringgit, it's really depending on not the material in it. It could cost me 5,000 ringgit to make, but if you don't value it as 5,000, you will not buy it from me. Yeah. And it could cost me only 10 ringgit to produce, but if you think there is a value in it that is worth 5,000 euro pain. So at the end of the day, there's a human being that will be putting a value on the thing that we offer. And higher education, in my opinion, is not different. Now, during the times of, of crisis and disruption, like the time we are having now, Sometimes what is being valued change. So I give you an example. People used to value, you know, cheap air tickets, right? If there is a there is a there is a travel fair, they will go to buy to buy these kind of tickets because they want to travel. Now people, even if you give them the air ticket for 50% discount, they won't take it. 70% yes. discount, they won't take it. I think we we'll give them for free, they will not take it because they don't value it anymore. We don't travel. So the thing that we value has changed. We now value our safety more. Mm -hmm. So, and sometimes the thing that we value, maybe we still value it, and I think this is the case of education, but the channel through which we deliver the value has changed. So we used to deliver this through a face-to-face -face kind of uh, uh, 
way. Uh, I think if this was a, a normal situation, I would have been traveling, I would be with you uh, face to face. I would have spent maybe the whole day interacting with all of you. So the channel now is a digital channel. And, and because of this, trust me, I have no clue whether anyone is listening to me or not, or maybe there's 1,000 people listening to me. I'm just doing this on, on, by faith or on faith. So, so in higher education, this is what is happening. And there is, we need to transform the value and we transform the channel through which that we, we are offering the value so that we, we are able to bridge the human gap. We are able to prepare our youth and our nation and our world for tomorrow. Yeah. So I think transformation need to, um, need to really focus on uh, the curriculum. So th philosophically, the, the things that were on the right hand side of the, of the diagram, mm -hmm. the emotional bit, the creativity, the critical thinking and so on, these are things that some people think you can't teach, you cannot teach. And I think philosophically, we have to accept that we can, we can teach and we should try to teach. Mm -hmm. And, and we, these are things that actually are very hard to teach. They are very hard to learn and they are very hard to measure as well. Mm -hmm. But we have to try. And I think we need to see that that bit that is taken away by the machine is freeing space in the curriculum so that we put stuff inside to prepare people to be emotionally intelligent. So I, in our university, we do teach our students about emotional intelligence, whether they are actuaries or engineers or, 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 or business students, we teach them about that because it is important. Now, the pedagogy also needs to change because uh, there, is, um, there is a sense of safety. If I go to a, to a classroom, there's 40, 50, 100 people inside. I have prepared my slides, I've delivered, I feel that I've done my job. But pedagogically, if I'm speaking with you and I don't even know whether you are listening to me or doing something else or even you are there or not, the pedagogy itself needs to be transformed so that I can ensure that you are engaged and you are learning. Yes. Mindset also needs to, to change and, and education should play a role in that. And the mindset she needs to be, need not be that if someone finishes their degree, it means they are done and that's it. You know, this the, the, the rest is history. We all need to be lifelong uh, learners. We all talk about lifelong learning. But honestly, honest to our hearts, how many of us is really a lifelong learner? How many of us even, in, how many of us have read about the latest ways of teaching and change their behavior based on that. How many of us is just waiting, like patiently or impatiently, for the COVID to disappear so that they can go back to doing exactly the same thing we did before? This is, these are very serious questions. The other transformation that I, in my opinion, is very important. We need to, to, to shift our thinking from what discipline you want to do because this is these are the questions that we ask about because what do you want to be when you grow bigger uh, when when they are uh, when they finish their SPPM or a levels or whatever we say what course do you want to do and i think these are very limiting questions and i think we need to ask them what impact do you want to have on the world so these are the 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 four shifts and transformations that i am suggesting for us in, 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 in academia. Now, how can we do that? Now, I believe that education has really focused on academic achievement and professional skills. I think we do this very well. We, we know how to teach it, we know how to measure it, we know how to accredit it, we know how to certify it, we are very good at that. But many things are telling us that this is, while necessary, is not sufficient. I believe that we need also to start with a sense of purpose. People need to know why they exist, why they are doing what they are doing. And then, to education, we need to add that sense of character, values, and also building of soft skills. 
building it in each and every one of our students, but before that, building them in each and every one of our academies. And education also needs to focus on the sense of well-being. So when you start with purpose, and let that purpose go through the academic achievement, the character values and soft skills, and an environment that supports well-being, you will have impact. And the impact could be economic, cultural, scientific, social, anything, you will have impact. And I call this, we call this, positive education. So positive education is that approach to education that does not only focus on the academic achievement, but also focus on building character, well-being, sense of purpose, and preparing our youth to have impact. Now, many of you may say, oh, all our universities and schools actually do, do, do that. But I really would like to question this, because it means we are having problems that everyone to go through. You know, sometimes I, I, I think of, of our universities the world over. When, when they, when they want to say that they are developing, let's say, entrepreneurs, they would pick someone who would been through the system and become a successful entrepreneur. But I would argue that this person was an entrepreneur whether he went to university or not. As a matter of fact, there are people who are entrepreneurial only because they have left university. Think of people like Bill Gates or people like um, uh, you know, an Apple founder and, and people like that. So I think this is an important framework for us, and it's very necessary for this time of well, I'm, uh, in our history. I'm going to share some examples of projects very quickly that we have done that all of our students go through, and they are aimed at building them, uh, building their sense of purpose, sense of impact, and well-being and character, besides the academic um, uh, uh, excellence. So we have this program, we call it the Empower Program. And the Empower Program has four stages. The first stage is the what level, which is the first stage here. And it's, uh, it focuses on knowing and leading self. And every one of our students, if they're near one at the university, they have to spend their entire first year working on elements of global citizenship, emotional intelligence, people's skills, entrepreneurship, critical thinking and things related to employability. The cornerstone of this is really defining their impact. And every one of our students have to have an impact state. We, you know, if you go to any university in the world and ask someone, what are you doing? Most likely they will think that they are ask, you are asking them about the course that they are studying. They will say, I'm doing mechanical engineering or electrical engineering. But if you come to our university, our dream is ask the students what you're doing, they will look you in the eyes and say, look, before I graduate, I'm going to plant a million trees because throughout their lifetime, they are going to remove 100,000 tons um, of CO2 from the atmosphere. Oh, and by the way, I'm doing chemical engineering. So that first bit we call the impact statement. We want them to have a sense of calling, a sense of purpose. Now, this is the first level which everyone has to complete. We have three other levels, the kilowatt level, which is about leading teams, the uh, megawatt level, which is about leading communities, and the gigawatt level, which is about leading enterprise. So you could see that as the wattage, which is the unit of measuring power, and also it's from the name of our university, and it also carries the name of one of the giants of the first industrial revolution, James Watt. As you increase the watt, just like you start from a small bulb that lives for yourself, to a kilowatt, which is a, a big light bulb that could be for you and a team around you that you are leading, to megawatt, which could lit a village, to gigawatt, which literally powering the world. So the students can actually work on projects and activities, and we give them watt points. So the first level, the students can, can earn up to 990 watts to complete it, and the kilowatt is uh, which is a thousand watts, is when they start with the next stage and then they can go up to 999 kilowatt and, and, and so on. So this is the program that everyone in the university goes through and uh, we have received very good feedback from the students, their parents and also from the industry about that. We also teach our students to say thank you. And as a matter of fact, I hope that today all of us learn from these kids 
how to say thank you in an in a, in a impactful way. I have a video to, to show to you and I hope it works, so okay. watch the video. Okay. The audio is not that clear, bro. How is it now? Um, not really. It's not really clear. Can you play it from your side? I send you the slides. Can we? Yeah. Okay. Can we do that? Yeah. Ask, ask Prof to send the link. So, so you are, are you not okay. hearing this well? Yeah, not, not really. Yeah, not very clear. Bro. I sent the whole slides to you this morning. Okay. Can you? Okay. We we'll try out. We will try that. Out. So I apologize for uh, for no, this. No problem. Bro. We try out. Uh, are we trying it out now? Sorry. Uh, we are trying it out now. Okay. Okay. Is it better? Yeah. So is the video being played? Yeah, oh, hold on, Prof. We are trying very hard right now. Okay, okay. Now but you can just continue, Prof. You can just continue. We try to work on that. Okay, so okay. We'll go with that. Because I have another video after this. So oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, okay. can, can you check with them? Can we mm. get the uh, video that I sent them or not? Okay. They are trying to, to get that video on okay we see how they are trying to mm. okay anyway so okay I, I go back to, uh, to what i was talking about so basically okay. what we have taught the, uh, our, the the students here is to yeah. say thank you in an impactful way yeah. so the one, way the, the one the video that you showed us probably is the video from the children to the parents they're writing letters or messages to the parents saying thank you, appreciation, yes. something like that. I can see that is what we thought from what that is what I think from the video. Yes. Yeah. Can you play it to the yeah. audience directly? We are working on it right now. Yeah, are, yes. So so uh, can they hear me? Can the audience Yes, yes, you can still hear you. Okay. No problem, bro. And can they hear you too? Okay. Can they hear you? Uh, yes. Yes, yes, okay, yes so we do. So, in that video, yeah. what we did, we, we taught the, the, the students to say mm -hmm. thank you in an impactful manner. Right. 
And basically, we taught them how to say thank you specifically for what? This is the first bit. Okay. Thank you for what? This is the first thing. The second thing is, yeah. how did that thing that you've been okay. helped with... Prof? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we are showing right now, Prof. We are okay. showing the video right now. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Okay. I don't know how to react. Okay. Okay. The power of gratitude. <laughs> I, I don't know how to react. Okay. Hey, Ma. Hey, Dad. You know, I have to tell her, but very hard. <laughs> um, I'm about to read something to you. And, uh, Dear Mama and Papa, there are not enough words to describe how thankful I am to you. Thank you for carrying me and guiding me all the way. I feel incredibly grateful to have you as my mom. I bet you never expected this when I told you to attend my graduation. As your doctor, I can do so many things to make you be happy and be proud of me. I know I don't show how grateful I am enough, but I really am. As we're a typical Asian family and we rarely express our affection towards each other. From the time I couldn't speak properly at a young age and being a very shy little girl to being someone who is confident and very determined to achieve anything. I'm grateful that you want me to have a better future. I'd like to tell you that you really mean a lot to me, even though I don't show it much. You're like my strength and pillar in life. Everything about you is amazing. First, thank you for never giving up on our family or on me. Thank you for working so, so, so hard to be able to send me to university. And for that, I would never be able to repay you. Mommy, I like to say that you are my superwoman my best friend and the best mom in the entire universe. You will still encourage me and tell me to never give up. I'd like to thank you for fully supporting me in whatever I do and letting me explore by my own instead of limiting my potential. Although I had made many mistakes, you will always forgive me. I am grateful for your kindness. Without you, there is no me and I would certainly not be reading this out loud to you right now. But because of your unconditional love and support, I was able to muster up all my courage to read this in front of you. From day one, you have been my support system. Thank you for thousands and thousands of dollars you still and that spend on my education. So Ma, I just want to say thank you for always being my home therapist 24-7. I love you Mommy, forever and always. Love Ellie. Oh my god, that is so touching. Okay, bro. Thank, thank you very much. I, 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 so, I, I, I can't speak now. It's so yeah. touching. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, this is a great video. This video is, is really done after we have 
okay. help these kids how to say thank you. Yeah. And you know, often we sometimes thank you without really meaning it, just yeah. as a form of courtesy. Yes. But these kids, they they thought about it, and there are four steps to 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 to, to do a, a, a meaningful and impactful thing. Okay. First. Thank you for what? Specifically mention that and yeah. very clearly. Mm -hmm. Number two, how is that thing that you are thanking the person who's being thanked for have helped you? Yeah. And number three, acknowledge the sacrifice that they had to do so that they they give you what you are thanking them for and finally recognize their character strength. Yeah. So for example, if you are able to to, um, let's say, if I'm able to be with you today because my wife agreed to take care of our children and do all the work at home so that nobody comes and, and disturbs me and I want to say thank you to her for that, mm -hmm. I need to say thank you very much for giving me this one hour plus without uh, disruption yeah. and taking care of all of our family. Yes. Now, what did that, you know, how did that make me feel, did it help me? Through this, I was able to speak to wonderful people, academics and teachers yes. from different parts of the country and the world. And maybe through this, I can touch their life. And that means a lot to me. Number three, I have to acknowledge the sacrifice. And the sacrifice is she has to work nonstop, mm -hmm. weekends, weekdays, and all of that. And maybe I, the character strength that I want to recognize in her is her kindness and her generosity. So if you thank people in that way, mm -hmm. you will have tears in their eyes. Exactly. And they will really understand that you have made a difference in their lives. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing that I would like each and every one of you today to think of someone and to thank them in that way. Either you give them a, a call or send them a, a text message and thank them in that four stages and be ready to receive very good things, yes. including better relationship with, with, with all of them. So this is an example of the work, mm -hmm. some of the work that we do. Mm -hmm. Now I wanted, I have another video prof you could help me play, which is about the impact statement that shows how the students who went through that work to do the impact statement, and it's exactly the next slide. So would you be able to help me to play okay. it from we'll your end? Okay, see whether we can have it played and show Okay, now we'll just continue, bro. Okay, so while while you are trying, and mm -hmm. you let me know when it's done, okay. I just want to share with uh, with everyone another initiative that we do that's aimed at creating well-being within, within our uh, community, and that is called the uh, 10 Keys to a Happier uh, Living that came up, was developed by uh, an organization called okay. Action for Happiness. Bro, we are ready with yes. the second video now. Okay, go for it. Right. Education should empower our students beyond academic achievements. It should build character and the soft skills needed for success in life and to enhance personal well-being. It's all about cultivating a sense of purpose which will lead to making an impact on the world around us. At Harriet Watt University, we call this positive education. I am a writer. I am a bridge builder. I am a light bulb. I am a change maker. I am a catalyst. I am a breath of fresh air. I am a peacemaker. I am a soul warrior. I hope to communicate to other people my own sentiments to express what I feel about issues in today's world. My purpose is to help others develop a personal understanding and perspective of the world around them. I aim to encourage the sharing of opinions and perspectives between people from different walks of life, resulting in the development of positive worldviews. My purpose is to encourage and support the community around me to reach the best versions of themselves. My purpose is to enhance youth participation and engagement in leadership programs by creating positive changes at individual and community levels. I aim to build, innovate and transform the world towards sustainability and I dedicate my life towards building healthy teams and sustainable communities where people get to enjoy life with more happiness, growth, recognition and purpose. I wanted to be the sparks of summer life as I believe everyone has the obligation to make the world a better place. I promise to the best of my abilities to contribute 
to the sovereignty of this country and give impact to others. My purpose is to help people manage their financial matters in order for them to achieve a better financial security and also to reduce their financial burden on their shoulders. I find joy in connecting with other individuals in hopes of adding value into their lives. My purpose is to help others in all capacities to create a positive impact in their lives. I aim to create a platform with the help of industry leaders for young individuals with mental health issues and those who need support and guidance to pursue their dreams in life. So this is what we do with, with the impact statement and yeah. every one of our students mm -hmm. and indeed every one of our staff members has to develop their impact statement I and see. come closer to you know discovering their purpose and realizing their impact. The, I'm, I'm, I'm approaching the end, so this is a project okay. I wanted to share with you, a project we call the uh, Happier You. Mm -hmm. And basically we are saying that happiness has 10 keys to it. It goes by the acronym Great Dream. Okay. And, ha and to achieve happiness, we need to know that it's about giving, it's about relating, it's about exercising and staying fit, it's about awareness, it's about trying out new things. It's also about a sense of direction, about having resilience, about emotions and about acceptance of who we are and be comfortable with who we are and also about having a sense of meaning. Right. So we, we, we try to, to gear almost everything that we do as much as we can towards doing it from a sense of uh, uh, the 10 keys for happier living. So for example, if we are running uh, a blood donation drive, mm -hmm. this could be an act of giving. But it also could be an act of trying out because some of mm -hmm. us maybe have never given give up blood in, 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 in their lifetime. And it's really to reframe the thinking about happiness. It's, it's not only about being joyous and bubbly all the time, but it's about that sense of being grounded, and contented, and being able to contribute and connected and be able to, con to contribute to the, to the world. Right. So all of that is positive education. And I really wanted to just end, or almost end, by seeing COVID mm -hmm. as a leadership framework. Mm -hmm. You know, the word COVID now, if you mention it, I think it engenders negative mm -hmm. um, connotations. And I want us to reclaim this word, word because it really is about what do we make of it? So I would like to say the C stands for communication. And yeah. it's about what is your story and how are you telling it to whom? The O is opportunity, and it's about always finding opportunities and add values in whatever we do. V is for vision, is how do we see the recovery from COVID happening? And how are we going to have a better world after that? I is for impact, and what is your impact statement? How do you want to touch the world? And the D is for development, and how are you developing yourself how are you learning and how are you helping others develop? So before I end, I just wanted to share some personal stories. And you know the picture, the person in the kilt is myself mm -hmm. and uh, the gentleman in the middle is our vice chancellor and I think some of you can tell that the Sultan of Slangor is the guy mm -hmm. to, to the right when we gave him um, uh, an honorary doctorate. Mm -hmm. So when this picture appeared in, 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 in social media, and also another picture of me when um, a prince from the royal family, Prince Edward, visited us and I was walking with him, someone, of, someone of, one of my friends told me, you know when you were a child 40 years ago or more in, 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 in Baghdad, have you ever dreamt of being in Malaysia in a, in a Scottish kilt and walking next to Malaysian yeah. and, and British royalty? And the answer is no. But I remember another picture of myself with okay. my father, which was taken maybe more, actually more than 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, if life is that journey that takes us to places, sometimes we never plan. Yeah. But I think it's that sense of having um, you know, that sense of purpose and sense of meaning and sense of movement forward and 
trying to find opportunities and add values it's really what what makes the day yeah. so with this i would like to thank you for the opportunity that you gave me to share and i'm very yes. happy to take some questions if we still have time all right okay thank you so much thank you so much prof okay um we have actually let's listen ladies and gentlemen to a very meaningful and informative presentations on what positive education is from Professor Mustaq Al Atabi, and um, I think probably we will have just uh, uh, based on the time that we have, Prof. Probably we just have to entertain one question, only one question, Prof. But I, when you mentioned about uh, at, at the earlier of the presentation just now, um, the educationists or educators are not doing very well in imparting the uh, soft skill. I was about to reserve that question to you later, but later when you show the program and you show the video on uh, how these children are actually coming up with a little appreciation the parents, I think this is one of the ways that we can do as educators as to impart that social skill. Okay, Dr. Uh, Prof, we have one question for you. Uh, Prof, uh, in your opinion, what is the best pedagogy to teach values among our youth when they learn a lot of things from digital sources? Okay. So, is that clear? So I think, I think the, uh, interestingly, when we do the impact statement, mm -hmm. the first exercise, you know, when people say, I am mm -hmm. a soul warrior, mm -hmm. I am a bridge builder, mm -hmm. before they reach this, there, is a, there are two exercises. One of them is to try to deduce their core values, and the other one is to look at their life experiences. So mm -hmm. I believe that all of us do have values. We need to be aware of our values and what brings meaning to our life. But also I think it's very important for us to, to be role models uh, in terms of the values and also for our universities and organizations mm -hmm. to, be, to have values. I think every organization has core values. They write it on the wall. Right. But if they don't live them, mm -mm. then it, they are just, you know, just words. They are Meaningless. empty, empty uh, empty words. So I think it's um, uh, having role models, uh, uh, building interestingly that sense of purpose will will even strengthen the the, the core values of, uh, of of our kids even more. I, mm -hmm. I assume the person who is asking is talking about you know the the positive values that we want to mm -hmm. people, the hard working, the you know helping others, honesty, and the rest of it. And all of that actually is connected, in my opinion, with a sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. Because we speak to students who say, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Yeah. What do you want to be? I don't know. Mm -hmm. What do you think is good about you? Mm -hmm. Not don't sure. Know. <laughs> because this is, and this happens, it's, it's yeah. almost pandemic. Mm -hmm. So we need to actually go and, and work with these kids because they are, they are our wealth. You know, they're everything that we have. They're the future of the world. You mm -hmm. can't give up on them and just say, oh, because you are playing computer games, mm -hmm. you are, this is happening. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know, interestingly, I just want to tell this, this story if you very quickly. Mm -hmm. You talk about digital, uh, digital as being something negative. I don't mm -hmm. think it's necessarily that. You know, the other day I was working and I work in the top floor of my house and my wife texted me a picture of a big package and say, what did you buy now? because I buy things online. I said, this is too big, I don't remember buying this. So anyway, we went down and checked it, and it was my son who bought it, we, we discovered. Mm -hmm. So we opened it, and it's full of like this cheap biscuits and, and, and things like that. So when I was asking, what did you buy? He said, well, there is a, there is a guy, he is a, a, a foreign worker, you know, mm -hmm. general worker, uh, who works for a uh, place to deliver uh, gas tanks. And this guy, he started a business. Mm -hmm. So he was promoting it on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And my son saw it. Mm -hmm. And because this guy, although he had limited education and very poor English, he was confidently trying to promote his uh, materials. Mm -hmm. So my son crowdfunded with his friend 350 rings. Mm -hmm. And they bought some, some material that they don't want even to use. This is not the brands that we usually eat, and they plan to give it away okay. to some other people mm -hmm. just to encourage him. Mm -hmm. And he said, you should see him when, we, when, the, when our order came in and he was saying, thank you for these people who have supported me and we feel mm -hmm. so great about that. So, so not everything that is digital is actually bad. 
And particularly now, you know, without this digital realm, we won't be able to have this. So I think, I think this is how this is a very long answer to a very short right, question. Right. And I know we don't have time, but <laughs> if anyone wants to write to me yeah. and ask or get connected, I'm yeah. very happy to to connect with them. Yes. Thank you so much, Prof. Thank you so much for, for the questions and thank you Prof for responding to the question. I think it's such an amazing presentation just now Prof. Thank you so much again. Ladies and gentlemen, with that we have come to the end of our session today. I would like to again express our deepest gratitude to Professor um, Mr. al Tabi for being with us today. And of course, thank you for all the viewers for joining us. And before we end, we would like to come in uh, to, to remind that coming up right after this will be the Kahoot Cultural Quiz. And do stay on and join this fine quiz. Thank you so much again, Prof. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And yeah. please remember to send a WhatsApp All right. thank you message to someone in your life. Of course, we will do that right after this. We will. Bye. Thank you so much, Prof. Okay. Thank you again, everyone. Have a nice day ahead and salam. The whole crew, yes. the whole yes. crew. That will be the whole crew behind behind the presentation just now, bro. That's wonderful. wonderful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wonderful. Thank you very much for the great work. You're welcome. You. You're welcome, bro. Yeah, nice having you as well. Bye bye. Bye bye. Salam alaikum.